This evening there is a need for an executive session under Colorado Revised Statute 24-6-402, parentheses 4, parentheses B, legal advice, board to conference with an attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific matters. Can we have roll call, Monica, please? Need a motion? Oh, I need a motion to adjourn into. So moved. Second. Is there a discussion? Can we have roll call, Monica? Aye. 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 Okay, we will now move into the executive room at 545. Uh, Harvest, can you get that microphone? Call this board meeting to order on September, Tuesday, September 26, 2017, at 5 30. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? 6 30. 6 30, my fault. Uh, <clears throat> Can we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and also a moment of silence at this time. I'd just like you to silence for an individual that was part of our school district for 40 some years. Uh, we have named a school after him and that is Lester Arnold who passed away three weeks ago. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the, to the republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation under god, god indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all Can we have roll call, Monica, please? I think he's one of the technicians. Here. 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 I need a motion for the approval of the minutes on September 12, 2017. So moved. Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, Monica? Aye. 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 Moving on to audience comments. As we move on to audience comments. Agenda. Did I forget to approval of the agenda? I thought we just did. Oh, I need a motion for the approval of the agenda. Smart. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, please? Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Moving on to audience comments. Just want to remind individuals that under BEDEH that we have certain guidelines when you come up to speak. Uh, to the board. First of all, I want you to state your name. Could you please state your name? You have three minutes to speak. No seating of time between speakers will be permitted. Uh, all comments need to be made to district related. Your comments can suggest improvement but should be pro productive. You can provide written statements to the board for review. Uh, the president can recognize a board member or the superintendent to respond to questions by to clarify a district's position. First individual will be Chris Ellered. Good evening to Excuse me. 
and to the board. May I please uh, pass around a couple of documents for the board to review? Thank you. My name is Chris Allred. I'm from Longmont, Colorado, which is in St. Vrain Valley School District. I'm here to follow up on a recent commitment made by the Boulder Valley School District and the St. Vrain Valley School District to not allow field trips to Rocky Flats. Please reference the resolution that I passed around that was passed by Boulder Valley unanimously on March of this year. And I would like to request that the board here make a similar resolution, please. This is an urgent matter of public health for all students in the Denver metro area because U.S. Fish and Wildlife plans to open the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge in the summer of 2018. So I'll mention four points tonight in support of this resolution, and I'll be sure to send a follow-up email to the board for further research on these items and on the issue. The first point is that the chief concern is exposure to plutonium and other radioactive contaminants. Please reference the map from Kaiser Hill's 2006 study of plutonium-239 and 240 in surface soil. The yellow dots are above 9.8 picocuries per gram. Please compare the next map of proposed trails at Rocky Flats to see how close this contamination is to where people could possibly hike. The second point is that the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge is surrounding an active Superfund site. And you'll see on that map how close the trails are to the Superfund site. There is ongoing remediation of uncontrolled contaminants at the Superfund site. The fourth item in that packet is a table of reportable conditions from 2013 to 2016. Those are conditions within the Superfund site, reportable conditions of plutonium, uranium, vinyl chloride, and trichloroethene. The third point is that a 2016 health survey conducted by a group called Rocky Flats Downwinders shows rare types of cancer downwind of Rocky Flats. And the fourth point is that a 2016 class action, uh, class action lawsuit settlement, the Marilyn Cook versus Dow Chemical and Rockwell case, set a court precedent that contamination remains east of Rocky Flats. That was a uh, $375 million settlement that was settled spring of last year. And I'll be sure to send this information in a follow-up email in light of this information, please pass a resolution to not allow field trips to Rocky Flats. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Andre Vaughn. My name is Andra von Baselager. I live in Boulder, Colorado, and uh, my I'm in the Boulder Valley School District site. Um, that's the school district where I am. I'm, I am get nervous talking in public, sorry. So I am with Chris, talking, hoping that you will um, pass a resolution not to ban field trips to Rocky Flats. I've worked in public schools for 15 years, and I know that the highest priority for the school system beyond education is health and safety. If you don't have that, you, you can't do much education. So Rocky Flats is a Superfund site, and I looked on their web, the EPA's website today, and a Superfund program is responsible for cleaning up the nation's most contaminated 
land and responsible and responding to environmental emergencies. So I know that you know about this because you have um, Rocky Mountain Arsenal near here. And um, for th at Rocky Flats, for 37 years, they produced weapons-grade plutonium. And it is still in the soil. It's not been all gotten rid of. There have been industrial accidents there. The most costly industrial accident in all of U.S. history was at Rocky Flats. Um, when they took this, court, this case to court, the Department of Energy contractor pled guilty to criminal violation of 10 environmental laws, and they paid $18.5 million in fines. So I know we have, in schools, we have fire drills, tornado drills, intruders in the building, intruders out of the building. You get emergency contact numbers. You get doctor's phone numbers, dentist's phone numbers. So it feels like this is a, just a perfect adjunct to that, to keep kids off Rocky Flats. So I hope that you'll consider uh, doing a resolution to not allow students there. There are so many beautiful places in Colorado and we'd be happy to help you find other places if you are, need that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> uh, Barb McDowell. Good evening, President Rolla, Superintendent Abrego, distinguished members of the board. I'm Barb McDowell. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the Classroom Teachers Association. Um, the last time I was here, I mentioned some of the issues that are ongoing. I wanted to make some clarification. When I talked about um, the, the um, issues going on with special ed, I wanted to make it clear that it was not a program or a problem throughout special ed. It was a problem at one site with special ed. Um, the special ed department is trying to rectify it, but it is an issue at a site, not at the program. I also um, misspoke when I talked about there being no occupational therapist. We apparently have one, um, but now at the last board meeting, you also contracted out for another one. Um, at the last time I was able to speak, I talked about how this is probably the roughest year, and it continues to be. We're days away from October, and daily I'm still, or Gina Otterby or Yvonne Bradford are still dealing with issues that um, I was hoping we would not be doing near October. And then lastly, as a personal thing, I, we have a number of teachers and students from Puerto Rico who have been unable to contact their family to find out if they're okay or alive. So I would like everyone to please keep them in our thoughts and um, be sending good thoughts to them because we have some students and family members or print teachers who have not been able to reach their family in Puerto Rico. Um, thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Okay, there is no superintendent's report at this time, so we will move on to routine items, consent items. Uh, 1.1, I need a motion for accepting the pro personnel actions by superintendent. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can I have roll call, Monica? Aye. 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 Moving on to business, other 3.5, superintendent's recommendation, need a motion for the approval of school dud web-based cloud software renewal. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, Monica? Aye. 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 Moving on to 2.5, superintendent's recommendation. Need a motion for the approval of out of state to Chicago, Illinois to attend the 2017 National Association to the, for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth Conference. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, I do, I guess I would like uh, does can anyone tell us how many homeless families do we have in our community? We, our we have 530 families. 535? 530. 
Okay, and how many of the kids or students? That's how you, many? That's 535. Oh, okay. 530 students that are homeless. Okay. Just want to know. Thank you. So, need uh, can we have roll call, Monica? Mr. Aye. 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 Moving on to 3.5, superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion for the approval of in-state overnight trip to Vail, Colorado by Human Resource Director to attend Employment Law Conference. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, Monica? Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Moving on to 1.4, superintend superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion for the approval to increase in table of authorization personnel for nutrition services staff. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, Monica? Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Moving on to 1.5, superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion for the approval to accept donations from Ascent Technology for school supplies provided to all sub elementary students. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, could we have roll call, Monica? Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Moving on to 1.6, superintendent's recommendation. I need a motion for the approval of out-of-state travel to Tucson, Arizona for a team to visit beyond textbooks. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, Joe. I, I do have a question. Why are we going to Arizona to, um, monitor. to, to monitor this? Didn't we do this earlier in the year before we bought textbooks? No, we've never sent a team to, to Vail. Uh, not Vail. Or that's, it's Vail, Vail. Beyond Textbooks is the Vail School Districts in, in Arizona. Uh, they came in and presented to our district. Our People from our district have never been to Vail. They've never visited. And what we are doing is we are implementing Beyond Textbooks, but uh, many of our teachers want to go there and visit because of what they're learning. But rather than send teachers from the high school, from Rose Hill, from Central and other schools, I sat down with the executive director and said, is it okay if we just send a team to, to your district for a couple of days to uh, view the BT program at their high school, middle schools, elementary, and they in turn can come back and uh, they're the ones that are gonna be monitoring our district so they'll understand how it works, uh, see it firsthand basis, and also help our teachers here. Well, Jamie Ball, what's her role here at the ESS building? Uh, she deals uh, with assessments. She's like our um, in charge of all our assessments so that we are in compliance with all the state um, th things coming out of CDE. But what we're trying to do with Beyond Textbooks is you know we incorporate a lot of technology with the uh, Chromebook. So she is a person that we want to send so she can bridge that gap between the technology and the education components so they could work as one. Thank you. Okay. And when they come back, Dr. Abrego, will they have like PDs with the teachers that are teaching? Uh, yeah, BT has a uh, ongoing PD and visits with us. Uh, okay. Again, it's all in our turnaround plan, certain things we have to do, but again, I'm the only one that has actually been to Vail or has observed, so we want our team to go there so they could see it in action compared to how we're doing it to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Okay, okay. Is there my, any other discussion? Go ahead, Carvis. Uh, my question is, we are implementing the Beyond Textbook in our district as of today. Oh, we, we've, we've been implementing Beyond Textbooks from the beginning of the school year. They've already, uh, our team here from DSS goes out and monitors every Wednesday we go to schools. For example, tomorrow, everyone is responsible for a certain school. Not just that, we have a BT liaison, which is Matt Schwartz, which is part of our turnaround plan that we have to have that. BT has also come in and done an inspection to, and, and given us a report on what they have seen to make sure it's being implemented correctly. They're coming again next month. That will be their second visit. So uh, it's, it's, it's uh, being implemented in 
our district. And all the computers that the district uh, approved to bring in. The Chromebooks, the Chromebooks we have purchased them all. I don't know exactly what the, uh, how many we actually have at the schools, but we, we have started, we have a process where we're putting so many in all our schools and they're utilizing them. As a matter of fact, when BT came in, we haven't even had training on Chromebooks for the high school, and they said that the high school was using the Chromebooks correctly. And I said, well, thank you for letting me know that because we haven't had the training yet. But, again, when we see them, particularly at their high school, because their high school does not use textbooks at all. Every single student there has a Chromebook. They were the first school in the United States to, to go that route. So I'm not saying we're going to do that, but we want to see how they do it because we're doing that with our freshmen and sophomores. Uh, when do we can we expect a report on how we're doing with beyond textbooks? I told uh, Matt uh, Schwartz, our BT liaison. I said, Matt, you guys are going to go on that uh, visit in the month of October. We will we'll already have one semester in our belt, so I said, be prepared to come in and and do a, a report for our board. That's going to be one report. But I think part of our uh, BT or uh, turnaround plan is that he has to report to the board you know, every every month. So he'll give you like short five minute reports on my behalf on how we're doing with Beyond Textbooks. Just to, just to clarify, when uh, Mr. Thomas asked you about our computers, not all computers are in service right now for the students? We have purchased all our Chromebooks. I didn't ask you if, I know we purchased them. I asked him if are they in service for our students. Have they been distributed are they being used? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. And, and I think, let me, uh, my computer person is not here, but uh, I can get you that answer. If you uh, let me meet with him tomorrow, I can get back to you on that. Because if they're not being used, then actually this program is not being implemented throughout whoever's supposed to have it. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you remember two things, and I, I keep saying this. Beyond textbooks is one component. It does not require the Chromebooks. The Chromebooks were an initiative from our board to in, in, have more technology in our schools. So, you know, you don't need the Chromebooks to have beyond, uh, beyond textbooks. But we do want to keep incorporating more technology in our schools. So that's that's our goal. And and I understood that when we voted on this. But the whole purpose of getting our kids up and our scores up was to give them all the tools that we can give them, and if they don't have the Chromebooks and they're sitting in our basement, I have an issue with it. Yeah, and I, I will give you the exact number because our plan was to have it for all the freshmen, and I know they have theirs, uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders at uh, Rose Hill and Central Center. I, I will get you the exact numbers tomorrow. Okay, because I do remember um, we were promised that they would all be up and running by the uh, beginning of the school year. I'm not sure on that beginning of school year, but I know we, we, we had purchased them all. We just had a plan to distribute them so that they would, you know, be uh, distributed to all the schools and they would, again, get the training that they needed. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we have a roll call, Monica? Aye. 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 Okay. At this time... Uh, we have discussion and we have a uh, clarify a policy regulations that you talk to Brady? I'm sorry on this uh, clarify policy regular regular regulations okay uh. I think the, uh, the policy of the regulation that I just want to make sure we clarify was the one on recess uh, that people have been asking. And I did pull up some information from the, uh, again, the Colorado statute. And I just want to make sure that uh, the board understands that the state does not require elementary schools to provide daily recess. Uh, they do require a certain amount of minutes, and that's 600 for the month and 150 for, uh, per week. Uh, we have updated that policy June of, of uh, 2016, we had our wellness committee research that policy. They did present it to the board, changes, and the board approved it. Uh, we do have some concerns in our district about um, implementing these minutes, and all I could say is 
we are working with our schools and our staffs, and I think we all want the same thing, and that is basically we want to implement this 150 minutes per, per week of physical activities, but it's not necessarily going to be through recess. We're trying to figure out how to have those minutes and protect our instructional time. So uh, I think as we continue to meet, some schools are figuring it out, but we want to make sure that we it, – it's uh, not an argument or debate, but it's something that we have to – work out together because we both want the same thing so we want to find that happy medium where our kids are getting physical activity and also maximizing their instructional time is there anybody that want to bring something up for discussion since this is the second meeting of the month we have something to discuss I Joe? Do, sir mr. president I was um, notified today that uh, also, we'll be having their trick and trunk, I believe, on the 27th. It's on a Friday of this month. I also was uh, advised that they do not have any grant money this year to purchase candy for um, what they're expecting, 600-plus children to attend this event. Um, I would like a consensus of the board that um, we give them of $1,000 to purchase candy to be purchased in the city of Commerce City to supply candy for these kids. And they're all neighborhood kids that go to Alsup and uh, the surrounding neighborhoods. So uh, just a question, Joe, is that treat and trunk, how, how, does, how does that work? Do they just go into school trick or treating or do they have like a, a haunted house or a maze or something? From, from what I understand is um, you'll have take a vehicle, people decorate their vehicle in hand, candy out from the back of their vehicle. And then uh, there's first, second, third place for the best decorated vehicle. It's in the parking lot. Last year it was 30 plus vehicles that were there handing out candy. So are these, are, are these parents that decorate their vehicles or parents, teachers? Parents, teachers, community members, board members. Okay. Dr. I, I attended their uh, trunk or treat and it was very nice it's uh they have all the cars around and then kids just go from station to station or car to car and they give them their treats uh, the only thing I do want to remind the board is that you have a certain amount of funds in your you know at your discretion and that you could use it as you wish and this is probably something if you want to do it you can however remember they're not the only ones that do this there's going to be other schools that may come to you and ask because I know this is done at other schools also I don't know how they get their funds to get their treats, but. Uh, yeah. uh, you should, right now, what they're asking is for uh, donations from parents. Right now, what I know is Duke Elementary School and also Elementary School, they are organizing this. At this point, that's what I know. And they are asking for donations to parents and community members. That's how it's done. So are they going to work together or different? Each no, school no, will no. do their own Each different? Each school, they do differently. And but it's pretty much the same festivities. And I think the high school does something, too, because I went to the high school last year, and they, I believe they had one in their hallways where they had all the like kids. Like the haunted house thing, didn't they, because if I remember right. So a lot of schools do this. I don't know how they actually get their, their candy and whatnot, but all I'm saying is you, you have funds. Uh, it's your discretion, but there's a, quite a few schools that are doing this, not just one. So there's, Joe has uh, made a motion there that, we help also, but uh, as they have pointed out, there could be other elementaries. <clears throat> but this is uh, well. If there's other elementaries, we would have to be equal right. with each school, and they're asking for funds. So, one thousand would probably be a bit high. You know. Mm -hmm. I would. Uh, Modify my motion saying that we should get 500 to each school who is participating Just Including participating the high school participating or approaches that, that approaches Okay Okay, so there's a motion out there <coughs> but, but Also, Just also has pencils. already approached. I mean they're asking I, I want, <coughs> Excuse me. I uh, attended also last year so You saying five hundred dollars per school is it just for the tr trunk or treat or how, how you got to specifically say, what are we doing? Because we don't know what schools, we could have all 11 schools in the district come for something, 
which I don't have a problem giving them the five hundred dollars. But my question is, what is the Pacific of the the five hundred dollars is for? I feel like if a school comes to us wanting a donation for any type of Halloween activity, we should we should honor that. Candy. I thought it was candy. Candy. Yeah. 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 So I think they would have to specify candy for the trick or treat. Right. To be purchased in the yeah. city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just five hundred dollars. Do we? Uh, do they just come up, or should we have them uh, fill out a form? Could they go oh. through Monica, and then Monica could email us? So five hundred per school would be a total of six thousand five hundred, and for community events, the board has only five thousand allocated, which you mm. donated already done the golf tournament and you've already done the table at the um, kids first, kids first. Um, the board typically does the donation for the education foundation mm -hmm. um, mr. Driller, can you um amend your motion to make it um, uh, just a thousand dollars and the district just, the district school just buy a thousand dollars worth of candy instead of five hundred dollars per this school modify to five thousand no 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 or one thousand one thousand so they can get a bulk load of candy to distribute amongst themselves outside with the district yeah, i'll make my motion to 1000 total to be spent on candy okay. throughout the district so they throughout can the district buy it at a bulk so bulk then we price. would have a excuse me Harvest, you, yeah. so in other words we'll buy a thousand dollars worth of candy and then we'll put them where so that the schools can <coughs> maybe go get <coughs> their candy where will we warehouse monica do you have any suggestions I can. I could it. You could distribute it from your office. Okay. That'd be good, and she could track it, you know, better. So, is a thousand dollars going to be enough, Monica? Because you're the one that buys all the candy for our parades, and I know this. Uh, what I did for homecoming that was two hundred dollars. Oh. Okay. Well, we have good. plenty there. Good, what kind of candy was it? Okay, so a thousand. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thousand dollars. So do I have a consensus for Monica to buy a thousand dollars worth of candy and distribute to the schools that come and ask for candy Good. for their treat or treats or whatever they're running? Harvest, how do you feel? I'm yes. good. Connie. Good. <coughs> Joe, you okay? Good. Tim, you? I'm good. And I'm good. So that's we have a consensus. Then, if Monica, if you could. Take a thousand dollars from the board and buy candy, so that way, and let it be known to schools that we have candy here. That they have to have some kind of a program going on that night for trick or treating. Okay, is there any other? Yes. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Miss Q. Ladies first. No, ladies first. I have a, a request. You know, I was at the football game. And that poor mascot, and I know they were doing, selling the tickets, you know, <coughs> to help raise funds to get that. Is there any way, that poor guy, his legs were showing and everything, it was so bad. <laughs> Is there any way that we could you gotta go out the, uh, buy it for them or assist, because it's bad. You gotta go out, um, they have to come out the, uh, they have their account, but they were raising money for it, so. How much is it? And I think, I don't know, I know they only made, what, about 200 uh, That's right. Mr. Mr. Roller. You got half of it. I got half okay, of it. How so, much? So, oh, it's 160 Okay, so, so. That's, their other, theirs was 160 That's what they got out of it because it was half. So they raised $160 towards their mascot uniform. And I don't know what they run, but. Do we so are they just doing this during the football games or are they because this has been going on since last year I maybe. know so what is as know. Joe asked what is the cost of this I mascot know. 
And how much are they, you know, we don't want to say, That's yeah, we'll true. buy it, and then it turns out to be $10,000. Oh, no, no, no. I don't no. think the guy from Alabama's. Okay, 10, forget 000, it. So. No, 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 it's, it's a, a good proposal, no, I, but I, I just like want to know. But it, he looks sorry, let me tell you. And I think our kids are worth more than that. $250 toward the purchase of it? No, it's more than that. I mean, for our, for our part of it? Or what oh. are you suggesting, Ms. Q? I don't know. Can we do that through policy, Monica? Uh, uh, because they have their own account? It's, that's not a function of the board. Oh, okay, it's not a function of ours. So. Uh, How can it not doc, be? Doc, Dr. Abrego, yeah. can, you, can your staff with the athletic director look into what okay. is the cost? and have um, staff take care of that and bring it back to the board within a couple of weeks to see what, what, what the money they have on hand and what it costs, and then we can determine um, costs from there or what the board want to do instead of us up here trying to guess. It's just a, a question I was concerned about because they, they really played, to me, great. I'm not a sports person, Mr. Rowe, but I thought they played very well. They won. Um, and I agree with Mr. Archuleta. They performed very well. They looked really almost as, you know. So I just think our team should look presentable, professional. You mean our mascot, not team? Well, it's still it's part of he's our part school. Of whatever. <coughs> he's, he's doing it all year, so we should get something. But I thought, I don't know. I don't know. Because I know it's been going on since last year. I, I remember that, yeah. So. so maybe we can inquire just see if they how much they've collected since last year and go from there see if it's in mm. our means and if not well it's okay does anybody else have anything to discuss yes Harvest. um the gentleman this um i got his first name chris just brought us this um, um <coughs> banning the field trips from rocky mountain nuclear Wep weapons manufactory uh, Dr. Brago, can your staff look into this oh, well. and um, get a board uh, update about um, a resolution if we have to go that route or find out if uh, we send kids up there or find out um, what we doing or what we should be doing or what we're not doing correct? Yes, I can look into that for you, Mr. Thomas. Yeah. I'm good. Anybody else have anything to discuss? Okay, moving on to communications. Just like to, there's nobody from the high school, but I just like to commend the student council for their homecoming activities this year uh, that they uh, that they were able to hold. I was able to attend two of them, the or three uh, went to the, or four went to the powder puff. I don't understand how the, that game can get hundreds of girls out there playing powder puff football, and then we look at our female teams and they don't have that great number of girls participating. I don't know what, what the problem is there, but it's just like Mr. Thomas and I were sitting there watching, I mean, that whole sideline was full, full of, of girls playing, and that's just two classes, juniors and seniors. And the attendance was, they had to close down the home side and start shipping them over to the visitor's side to watch the ball game. So it was a good night there for the girls. And I don't know, I think this little junior girl that uh, made the touchdown for the juniors, I think she's faster than anybody on the regular football team. Because when she turned that corner, there was nobody going to get her. Those little legs were just moving. So that was uh, exciting there as the juniors won. Uh, once again, and as Mr. Archuleta says, uh, the juniors continue to dominate because the juniors won last year, juniors win this year. So I don't know if the seniors take them lightly or what it is, but it was a good game. Then we went to the bonfire, uh, and it was the first time it's ever been held at the high school right by the tennis courts, and we had a good turnout uh, there, even though it was a little chilly. Uh, it was a good turnout of our students being there and enjoying themselves and having a good time. And um, I think we got, uh, was there till about 10.30 and then they finally started closing it down. So that one worked out. And then uh, when it got up early in the morning and 
went to the parade. Um, as we get to the parade, we have plenty of candy to hand out to our students that are on the street. And a lot of little kids are already trick-or-treating because they have their bags and everything. And uh, I'd like to thank Monica for getting us. I don't know if I should thank you, Monica, since I did all the peddling <laughs> with Mr. Archuleta and myself. But thanks for the, everybody enjoyed those bikes. They really thought they were nice. And um, uh, Mr. Archuleta and I, we drove one of those two-man bikes, and they're not we're front, back, they're side by side. And uh, so if one person's pedaling, he's making the whole bus, the whole thing go, and my legs are still hurting, <laughs> Mr. Archuleta. Hurt my golf game today. So, but uh, we had a good time there, and I, I was like an idiot because it has two steering wheels, and I'm steering the wheel, and it's all it is is turning. I'm not doing nothing. Mr. Archuleta was uh, staring up, but it, it was uh, it was fun. We have got to talk to a lot of the community, and, and that, I believe, was one of the things that when we met with uh, CDE or the state board is that how do you communicate with the community? And I think that really worked out real well because Connie and her Bronco uh, pickup was doing good and uh, talking to a lot of community. And Harvest was there, even though he was going a little faster than the rest of us, but he was there. And he was, we, as we sat there and we talked to a lot of the community members and they appreciate the, the stuff that we do there. Then uh, went to the barbecue for the hot dogs uh, for the ROTC program. Uh, they did a good job. I, I think the only thing they didn't do was give the ice cream that we had said, you know, they can hand out. And it was probably because it was too cold. <laughs> so we still have a bunch of ice cream sitting back there somewhere. So we'll have to do something with that. Uh, so that worked out. And then we had the football game, which, uh, who was it? Somebody stated that we did great, or Connie both, Connie and Timmy, yeah, the kids look good. Uh, we won our game, which is always a plus. Uh, on winning the ball game and uh, uh, kids, uh, the stands were just packed. They were packed um, with alumni and the community and it was a good thing to see our kids perform the way they did and they're now two and two, which is pretty good at this time. And so now for the dance, when I got home and I was gonna go to the dance, like look down, that rain was coming down, so there's no way am I going. So. I went and watched TV. So I don't know, did anyone here go to the dance? Nobody went, okay. Uh, so it was really great. It was great to see our community, uh, great for our students to perform and do what they did. Uh, my only question is the revenue for that, for all the activities I go, who's getting the revenue? Does they, uh, and if we don't know, can you check into that, Dr. Rodrigo? <coughs> Who's getting the revenue from the... Sales. From the, all the activities that's going on in, at the... For homecoming. I hope it's the student council. Because they do a great job. I talked to the principal and it is student council. It is student council? Good. Because they did all the work and they deserve it. It's a good fundraiser for them and we could get them going do things. All right, anybody else have anything for community? Uh, I'd just like to piggyback on, on what you're talking about, but the, but the part that is most exciting to me this year is I've been visiting the schools and the schools all look really, really nice. They've done a lot of nice work in the summertime to paint the doors, uh, do a lot of things different. Um, but the students, uh, energy and excitement in the classroom is like with it's like different this year for some reason i don't know what's going on but uh whatever it is the students are uh, are really enjoying going to school it appears and every conversation i have with them i i make sure and bring up the fact that they need to be in school every day studying every day ready to go to school ready to do their homework because the teachers are there for uh, to help them in their education, but they have to be there to learn. And it's, I think it's a strong message that needs to go out to the children. Uh, when I say the children, I'm talking about the grade school children. The, uh, I, have, I have a lot of conversation with a lot of the students and a lot of their parents and stuff, and, and 
there just seems to be a buzz in the community um, that is long in coming. Um, the participation at the football game, the football games I've attended, uh, which has been two, I didn't go to the one, the two that were away, but the ones that were here were well participated. The cheerleaders are doing a good job. They're, I mean, it's just it's just exciting to uh, to get back into the fall sports. Uh, That's all I have. Anyone else? Yes. I'm uh, not piggyback so much of what Dave said, but uh, homecoming parade was outstanding. I want to give. Um, a big shout out to Miss Stephanie Levine at the high school. She did a marvelous job for all that weekend. Also to Mr. Denmark, the concession stand was full. And um, to Mr. Gianni and Operation Maintenance for getting that bonfire set up so quick that Tuesday. And also um, my question is, uh, I just got this flyer in this uh, Adams 14 Teachers Appreciation Night at the Colorado Raptors. Um, Saturday, October the 7th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Is the district um, going to, like, uh, give teachers, uh, like, a raffle if they win some, put their put they name in a hat at the different schools? Because I'm looking at the prices, is $30 and $23. So is the teachers going to get any type of discount, or is that just a discount? That is the discount. Okay, well. And I see on there a portion of the ticket sales. What? How much is the portion? Who, who set this up? I mean. I'm sorry. CCWA. And what the, what those what those acronyms stand for, please? Uh, Commerce City Business Professionals. And uh, Ms. Um, McDowell, did they work with you, your union about uh, this? Yeah. They've been speaking with me about finding. Okay, so. Okay. So is this the only thing we have for teachers? For appreciate just this one thing I just think, right now? Yeah. But before you close, I also want to say a couple of things, Mr. Ola. Is it time? Can I speak? Uh, I just want to put a uh, uh, commend. Number one is our union for, you know, Barb and I meet. We work together. But I, I agree with you, Barb, that it's, you know, we haven't been able to solve everything. But I think that if we continue to work together, we can solve any challenge in the district. And I want to give you a thank you for the heads up on the uh, – plan periods, I think, and I think, you know, we again, we want to make sure that we're honoring contract, and as long as you give us a heads up, we can take care of things quickly, so thank you for that one. I also want to commend the board because I, I said I think we're really staying on task. We're running very efficient board meetings, so thank you for that. I appreciate that, and I think uh, all our members in the audience do too, so thank you. Uh, just go back to what uh, Mr. Thomas was saying is, I don't know if you know or you do know that one of our former students plays for the Rapids, and that is Dylan Cerna. Even though he went to Alsip his elementary years, and, and granted he graduated from Horizon, but he did. He is a local thing. His uncle always—I don't know where he's at tonight—but he always attends school board meetings. And his uncle is our body shop teacher, so there's some connections there of, that. Uh, represent our district there. So if we want to do something there, and I don't know, would the board like to go as a board that night? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Joe says yes, Timmy? Yes. Yeah, but I'll buy my own ticket. No, oh, that's what I mean, we'll buy our own tickets. But it'd be nice if we bought them and went and sat as, as a board. I'll be there be there well okay can we just uh who do we give the money to so they can buy the tickets for us so we can get them all seated together monica even though i, I don't understand soccer but i'll all attend uh, i remember when i was coaching i coached one uh, friend of mine asked me to help him coach soccer at matchbook and i did and i didn't know nothing and i told him so and he goes no it's all right you just come here and you help me take care of the kids the students players and i said okay 
First game we play, we're up in the mountains somewhere, and we play, and guess what? He gets kicked out of the ball game. He started arguing with the official, and the official says, get to the bus and stay in the bus, and says, okay, they're yours. And I go, what am I supposed to do? And so all I did was tell the uh, players, just kick the ball towards earth and just go for it. We ended up losing one to nothing, but we did all right. So that's all I know about soccer, just kick it. Mr. President, I'd just like to add, I, I was not in attendance uh, for homecoming week. Um, a lot of you may not know, but I'm a deputy director for Colorado Special Olympics, and I attended the national convention in Nashville this past week. That was scheduled um, long before, um, I guess, I knew about homecoming. So I do apologize for not being there, but uh, Special Olympics is dear to my, uh, very dear to my heart. So that's why I was not in attendance. Okay, good. Anything else? And just uh, hopefully you'll be able to, uh, did you leave your name, phone number, and then Dr. Obrego give, give you a call to let you know how, how we did on that policy or resolution? No others? Okay, I guess I need a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Well, nobody wants to leave, so nobody seconds it. We're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, can we have roll call, Monica, please? Mr. Aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned at 720. That's a record. <laughs>